Hi, good morning. My name is Sean Roberts. I'm Chief Technologist from Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me from the great state of Michigan, Justin Roebuck, um, who is the Ottawa County Clerk Register. And uh, morning, Justin, or I guess good afternoon, right? It's, it's... <laughs> good morning. Yeah, it is afternoon right now. Yeah. All right. So, Here in Michigan. <laughs> so uh, asking questions of different elections officials from different states. I think you're about number eight or number nine. So uh, we're getting a good flavor of different states and how they're approaching these, these questions. And we're trying to ask uh, questions from the perspective of the voter. So my first one to you would be, what should the voter do if somebody asks for your ballot? Um, there's a lot of concern about this nationally uh, in the press. Um, and I, I would preface it by saying, um, you know, if uh, at, at, your, at the door of your house or on your way to dropping it off, or uh, maybe even on your way to, into the polling place. Yeah, absolutely. Now that is a great question. That is definitely one that, you know, has raised, you know, there's been some concern raised over this issue of, uh, you know, what's, I guess, commonly referred to as ballot harvesting. Uh, in the state of Michigan, that is illegal. You cannot transport a ballot for someone, um, excuse me, you can't collectively transport ballots uh, mm. for someone. So a, an organization is, right, an organization is not allowed to conduct um, those types of activities where they would collect ballots en masse and, and bring them to uh, a clerk's office or a place for counting. Um, individuals can transport a ballot for a voter under two circumstances in Michigan. One is if, if they are a resident uh, of your household. So if I am dropping my wife's ballot off or if it, uh, you know, I have an adult child in the house who's voting, um, something like that, we can transport a ballot for someone who resides in your home. Uh, the other caveat is that if it's requested of me, to deliver, to pick up and deliver a ballot, for example. So maybe my, you know, my aunt or uncle is a shut-in and they need uh, some assistance with the process of um, getting their ballot to the right place, to the clerk's office. Um, and there's actually a little form that's literally on the envelope itself, on the ballot envelope itself, that I have to fill out as the individual who's assisting that voter in that case um, I have to fill that form out and acknowledge the fact that they did actually ask me to trans transport the ballot. So if, if someone ever comes up to you and volunteers that, um, I would say to the voter, make sure um, that you do not hand your ballot over to anyone who's offering to do that because it's illegal in the state of Michigan to solicit that as well. Oh, okay. And even the solicitation is legal. Um, I think yeah, I think that's about as uh, clear as you could possibly make it. Um, I, one, one possible exception, or uh, probably that um, would be the, um, the postal carrier. Yes, yeah, great question. So that's the right. official representative of the, the government, I think, in, in some respect, exactly. I forget the exact term. So, for example, there's a couple of exceptions. Obviously, the, the someone who works directly for the Postal Service and whose job it is to deliver the mail and carry the mail. Um, that's an exception. Also an exception is somebody perhaps in your building, you know, if you live in an apartment complex or somewhere where um, someone is responsible specifically for collecting the mail from a receptacle and bringing it to a certain place for delivery or pickup. Um, so the normal course of their job involves actually carrying the mail. That is an exception to the rule for sure. Okay. But again, that would not be solicited um, so oh, in other words, understood. You know, framing the question saying, you know, a voter, um, someone walks up to the voter and says, hey, can I take that ballot for you? Um, I would be very skeptical of that if I were a voter. So the, the, the most notable exception here um, would be that if somebody normally transports mail um, for, let's say, their community in a remote area, uh, back to the post office is a common activity that, that they're... Uh, that they've been empowered might be the, the incorrect word, but a common occurrence right. for them to transport the mail, then additionally, them carrying ballots in this case would be legal. Right, yeah, as, as, as long as it occurs during the normal course of their pro, uh, process where they're uh, carrying the mail from one, one place to another. 
that I've lived in very remote areas as well um, when I was younger. And that's, I, um, we definitely did have some people that transported mail um, for sure. others because, uh, well, it, it was the actual post office was very far away for them. So right. that's, that's a perfect, this great, great example to highlight. Okay, well, thank you for that. That was very uh, comprehensive. Um, so this has been Lincoln Shorts. Yeah. Okay.